On December 15, 1954, at Holloway Prison in England, 54-year-old Stilo Christoffi faced execution for murdering her daughter-in-law, making her the last woman on death row in the United Kingdom. Born in 1900 in a rural village in Cyprus, a British colony at the time, Stilo grew up impoverished, lacking formal education. In her village, law held little sway and physical dominance symbolized power. Raised amid such brutality, Stilo became a forceful and violent woman, imposing her will physically on those who disagreed with her. As she matured, Stilu entered an arranged marriage with a destitute man in a coastal village, surviving on income from a meager olive grove. Their struggles intensified when Stilu gave birth to a son, Stavros. Tensions peaked within the household due to her strained relationship with her mother-in-law, Maria, in a matriarchal society where the woman held ultimate authority. Maria, a stubborn and selfish woman, constantly made life difficult for Stilu. Despite societal expectations for unquestioning obedience, Stylo, uneducated but intelligent, resisted yielding to her mother-in-law. Their clashes escalated, reaching a breaking point on September 29, 1924, when, overwhelmed by anger, Stilu conspired with two others to assassinate Maria during a heated argument. Arrested and charged with attempted murder, Stilau faced trial. Surprisingly, she was not punished. Instead, she was acquitted and released. The turning point came when Stilo, in her enduring battle for control against her mother-in-law Maria, unexpectedly uncovered the long-standing mystery surrounding her father-in-law's death. It turned out that the entire untold story back to a scheme by her mother-in-law, Maria. In 1911, Maria and her secret lover covertly murdered her husband, concealing it as an accidental death. Learning this truth, Stylu discreetly revealed the secret to the family, urging them to uphold their father's honor and take action against Maria, disregarding her safety. In the societal context of Cyprus at that time, family honor held paramount importance. Any family member engaging in unacceptable behavior could prompt the society to defy the law to safeguard the family's honor. Maria's collaboration with her lover to kill her husband was deemed an egregious crime that tarnished the family's honor. With Stilo's persuasion, the family unanimously decided to hold Maria accountable for the damage to their honor. On September 29, 1924, Stilu believed that taking her mother-in-law's life with the assistance of two neighbors was a necessary and justified step to make Maria answer for her actions. The Cyprus court deemed Stilau's act justifiable, leading to her acquittal and release. Following the trial, Stilu's husband, shocked by the revelations, left home, leaving Stilu to raise their son, Stavros, on her own. As time passed, Stavros, now a teenager, sought a different life in the city despite his mother's objections. In the late 1930s and early 1940s, during World War II, he found work as a waiter in England. By 1941, Stavros had settled in London, England, earning a living through strenuous manual labor after working as a waiter. Over time, his striking appearance characterized by olive eyes and a warm smile, attracted attention. Securing a position at a high-class club, he encountered many captivating women, including a German model named Hella Blazer. Hella, an immigrant from Germany before the onset of World War II, shared a similar exile situation with Stavros. Mutual feelings blossomed, leading to a romantic relationship. Stavros and Hella tied the knot in 1942, garnering admiration from those around them. Soon after, they welcomed three children into their lives, building a life together and accumulating assets. Stavros continued working at Café de Paris, engaging with various notable figures, while Hella pursued a career at a fashion store. In 1953, 
the couple purchased a luxurious house in the densely populated residential area of Hampstead, London. Despite their demanding work, they found joy in spending time with their children in their opulent new home, projecting an image of happiness that, unfortunately, was short-lived. While Stavros relished his prosperous days in England, his mother, Stilo, lived alone in Cyprus. Twelve years had passed since Stavros left for England, never returning to his hometown. Stilo, displeased that her son had married a foreigner and angered by not receiving a wedding invitation, received a letter from Stavros one day. In its contents, Stavros invited his mother to visit him in England, bringing immense joy to Stilu. Despite never having left Cyprus before, in 1953, she embarked on a journey to London to reunite with her son, daughter-in-law Hella, and their three grandchildren after a 12-year separation. Having spent her entire life in the rural countryside, the dazzling lights and grandeur of London overwhelmed Mrs. Stillo. She was shocked by her son and daughter-in-law's lifestyle, vastly different from the traditions of her homeland. The grandchildren spoke English at home, fully embracing an England way of life. Furthermore, Hella, being a foreigner with a different religion, couldn't speak Greek. Stalu, with her previously domineering nature, decided to overhaul everything in her son's household. She insisted that the grandchildren adhere to Cypriot traditions, at the very least learning to speak Greek. Stilu intervened in family affairs, chilled Kara, and Hella's cooking. Hella passionately awaited the day her mother-in-law would return to Cyprus, believing that their family life would then return to normal. However, when her mother-in-law suddenly declared she wouldn't go back to her hometown, Hella fell into despair. Stavros and Hella's once happy home became tense and strained with the presence of Stylo. Facing the imposition of her mother-in-law for a year led Hella into depression. Typically, after work or on weekends, she avoided being at home and spent time outside with her children to avoid her mother-in-law. In July 1954, Stavros and Hella requested Stylu to return to Cyprus, but she seemed reluctant to leave. Finally, using the excuse of visiting family in Germany, Hella informed her husband that she and the children would go to Germany on August 12, 1954. Stavros promised to talk to his mother about this after Hella and the children left the country. Unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse. Stylu found out that her daughter-in-law, Hella, intended to take her grandchildren to Germany. Swiftly, she called Stavros and insisted that no one, particularly her grandchildren, could leave the house. Fueled by anger towards Hella, Stelu devised a plan to secure a permanent life in England with her son and grandchildren. Angry at Hella's actions, Stelu concocted a plan to ensure she could live permanently in England with her son and grandchildren. The only solution that came to Stelu's mind was to eliminate Hella. Stylu believed that even if Hella disappeared, she could still raise her grandchildren on her own. The more she thought about it, the more she relished the idea of Hella's disappearance from the family. On the evening of July 29, 1954, Stavros left the house for his shift at Café de Paris around 8 p.m. After his departure, Hella put the children to bed, tidied up the house, and prepared for bed herself. During this time, Stilo approached Hella from behind. Seizing the moment when her daughter-in-law was unaware, she launched an attack. As Hella fell, Stilo swiftly removed her wedding ring and dragged her outside. There, she set a fire. A neighboring witness observed the scene but mistakenly thought someone inside was burning a mannequin, given that Hella ran a fashion store. When Stilu ignited the fire with the intention of eliminating her adversary, it unexpectedly intensified. Unable to control the situation, Stilu eventually cried out that there was a fire, seeking help. Neighbors summoned firefighters to the scene, attempting to extinguish the flames. Hella's lifeless body was discovered as firefighters managed to put out the fire. 
Witnessing this, the police promptly contacted Stavros, delivering the tragic news. Stavros rushed home at 3.30 a.m. to find his wife had succumbed to the fire, grieving and in anguish. Approaching the devastated Stavros, the police requested his assistance in interpreting his mother's statement. When questioned about the incident, Stilu appeared confused, claiming she knew nothing. She asserted that upon noticing the fire, she ran out and screamed. Detecting something amiss, the police conducted a thorough search of the house, uncovering signs of a struggle. Evidence pointed to a deliberate act of arson. Suspicion grew, leading the police to initiate an investigation into Stylo, who was present in the house during the incident. Examining Hella's body, the police discovered that she hadn't died from the fire but was, in fact, attacked by someone. Hella's wedding ring was found in Stylo's bedroom leading to Stylu's arrest as a suspect based on the neighbor's testimony who witnessed her burning something. On October 25, 1954, Stylu Christofi's trial commenced. In court, Stavros testified that Hella and his mother had a strained relationship. Stavros mentioned that his wife had never removed her wedding ring in over 10 years of marriage, suggesting that his mother might have taken it off. While detained at Holloway Prison, Stylu underwent examination by a psychiatrist. The doctor testified that Stilo suffered from delusional disorder, displaying screams and hysteria at night. Stylu's lawyers argued mental incapacity, requesting her placement in a mental hospital for treatment. Stylu, asserting her normal mental state despite being poor and uneducated, received an unfavorable trial. During the trial for murdering her daughter-in-law, Stillo suddenly confessed to killing her mother-in-law 30 years ago. Stavros, learning of his mother's dual murders, was appalled. Two hours after the trial began, the court ruled that Stillo murdered Hella out of jealousy for her youth and appearance, sentencing her to death. On November 29, 1954, Stilu's appeal was summarily dismissed, upholding her death sentence. Since then, Stavros cut off all contact with his mother, who continued to express nostalgia through letters, receiving no response. Stylu blamed her son for the death sentence and showed no remorse. Days before the execution, Stylu, fearful, requested her son to file a petition to reduce her sentence, but Stavros adamantly refused, unable to forgive her. With her son's abandonment, Stilu accepted her fate. On December 15, 1954, Stilu Christofi, the murderer of her mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, was executed. She walked to the gallows with an air of acceptance, ending her life of crime without her son bidding her farewell. Before her execution, Stilu surprisingly requested a Greek Orthodox cross on the execution chamber wall as her last wish, a request the prison granted until the chamber's demolition in 1967. Stilo's peace-seeking gesture perplexed many, given her lack of remorse, highlighting the unsettling savagery that persisted from her youth to old age. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up to receive more content.